These next couple of videos in our brain series are going to cover the basic structure and function of the brain stem. And this video is going to begin with the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is the caudal most section of our brain stem and it connects directly to the spinal cord. So our medulla oblongata is said to be the lowest portion of our brain. Because it is the lowest portion of our brain, all of our nerve fibers entering or leaving our brain from our spinal cord are going to pass through the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is associated with four cranial nerves. So our medulla is going to come up to this crease right below the pons and it includes this entire section highlighted in red. Our first cranial nerve associated with the medulla oblongata is our cranial nerve 8, the vestibulocochlear nerve. Because of this, our medulla oblongata has some function in hearing and equilibrium. Our medulla oblongata is also associated with our glossopharyngeal cranial nerve, which is number 9. Cranial nerve 9, our glossopharyngeal, is involved in touch, pressure, temperature, taste, and pain in the back of our mouth where our oral cavity meets our pharynx. So it's the upper part of your throat. Our glossopharyngeal also is involved in chewing, salivation, swallowing, gagging, and vomiting. The medulla oblongata is associated with our vagus nerve, whose rootlets we see here. And here with our vagus, we have some repetition of function. We've got overlap between cranial nerves 9 and 10 with chewing, salivation, swallowing, gagging, and vomiting. We are going to skip 11 and go straight to cranial nerve 12, which is our hypoglossal nerve. Our hypoglossal nerve is going to control the movements of our tongue, so our medulla oblongata also has function in speech. So our four cranial nerves associated with the medulla oblongata are cranial nerve 8, 9, 10, and 12. Our medulla oblongata has other functions besides those functions associated with our cranial nerves. Our medulla oblongata is going to have nuclei that include our cardiac centers and these cardiac centers are going to regulate the rate and force of our heartbeat and our medulla oblongata contains respiratory centers. There are a couple of different respiratory centers in our medulla, which are going to regulate the rhythm and depth of our breath. And the medulla oblongata is going to initiate breathing. Lastly, we have some vasomotor centers that are going to regulate our blood pressure by increasing or decreasing sympathetic stimulation of our blood vessels. Finally, our medulla oblongata is going to contain a portion of the reticular activating system. We are going to discuss the reticular activating system or the reticular formation in the video that talks about our mesencephalon or our midbrain. So here we can see we've got many nuclei inside of our medulla oblongata. We don't necessarily need to know all of their names, but this chart gives us a quick overview of the different functions of our medulla oblongata. If you have any questions regarding the brain stem or the medulla oblongata, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.